Hello and welcome to the Dustin and Eric podcast show brought to you by Mimosa Networks. Hi, I'm Dustin. I'm Eric. And today we're on episode number 18, Antenna Selections. So we're going to talk about antennas for all of our connectorized products. Special guests, not a single one. Nobody wants to be on the show anymore. Well, we might have someone pop in. Maybe. A guest from Florida, but that's to be determined. TBD. TBD. Tango Bravo Delta. Cool. Did I get the B and the D? Did I mix them up? No, no. Tango Bravo Delta. You're good. To be determined. Good. Carry on. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. <laughs> so today, uh, getting right into our main course is antenna selections. So, Eric, uh, for our B11, what what are the vendors? Yeah, actually, we have some of these in play. Uh, Juris, Czechoslovakia. We've got uh, the 680 mil 9, and uh, I don't believe we have a 1200, do we? Yes. Oh, we do have one on crystal, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, the big guy. No, no, no. That's like a six foot from a different six vendor. Foot. Oh, 1.8 meter because I was on there. I was up on there yes, uh, last week. And then we have a 24. And that thing's rocking too. What's the length distance on that guy for the 900 mil? 20. Sorry, the 1200. Oh. Uh, that guy's from. You mean the, the 18? Yeah. For, 41 miles? 41 mile on that one. Yep, yep. Great deck. Uh, Great uh, performing uh, dish. And then we have the radio waves. Radio waves. Are we doing anything currently with radio waves? I don't, I don't we don't so. have any radio waves yeah. deployed, but we've got other customers who actually use radio yep. waves. Um, they're a little bit more expensive than Jiris, but they are a heavy-duty dish. So while Jiris is a, a lighter, uh, cheaper dish, the, the radio waves are definitely a little heavier and um, rugged. Yep, yep. Um, so then for the, the A5C, there's several different vendors out there. There are the Mimosa antennas that we have, the N545X2 and X4. Yep, yep. Uh, high uh, gain uh, uh, side, load side load rejection. Side rejection is, so. is up, yep, at 38 dB, I believe. Right. Yep, yep. Front to back is, uh, is up high. Actually, one, an industry leader in front to back as well. 42 at 42 dB. Yep. Yep, yep. And then you've got the RF element horns uh, from 30 all the way up to 90 degrees. Uh, you've got KP. Uh, KP Performance. Yep. Actually, we did extensive work with KP Performance, uh, 17 uh, dBi uh, gain uh, KPs at, uh, on 65 degree sector uh, for quite a while. And then, uh, and then eventually, uh, and we tried some MTI there. A um, little less uh, on the uh, front to side uh, rejection on the MTI, kind of overall. Nice cost point, nice uh, price point. Uh, but we went uh, ultimately and currently we, we're running our uh, X45s. Right. So yep. the KP and the MTI and the Mimosa are all four ports. Uh, the X2 uh, Mimosa is a two port. The RF element horns are two port antennas. So you'd have to double up on those. Uh, and then there's another vendor called Wireless Instruments, which uh, if you want to operate in the higher uh, band, 5.8 uh, to 6.5, then <clears throat> Wireless Instruments would be a, a good option for you as well. Uh, all the other vendors are uh, basically 4.9 to 5.9. Mimosa is 4.9 yeah. to 6.4. So <clears throat> We actually took a, a Jiris at 10 gig, and we and it was rated at uh, up to 5.9, and then we did some return loss measurements. It was actually the SWR curve, and the return loss was greater than uh, 14, 15 dB, which means it was it was okay up to around 6.364 as, as, far, we, uh, as far as we saw and in the, in the lab on that one. So we did some uh, test measurements with it. So it was actually a little greater than, I think, the data sheet for it. But right. that, again, that's going back to the 10, uh, 10 11. Uh, so you said 10 gig, Jiris, but he meant 5 gig. Oh, did I say that? Yeah, 5 gig. Yeah. So, yep, yep. Uh, Jiris has a, a 24 dBi dish that we use on our network as well. So, But those are for C5C, which we'll get to in a moment. All right, all right. Um, for the C5C, we have, again, KP Performance. They have uh, two reflector dishes, one that's 27 dBi and one that's 30.5 dBi. They look like your traditional satellite dish, so... Yep. Um, they kind of angle down at the ground and then shoot toward the tower because of the reflector angle. Yeah, so it's kind of conventional, like you said. It looks like a yeah satellite dish, and it's got a uh, it's got the little little feed horn that slides in and out with two end connectors. That, that am I look, yep, taking the that's right it. one? Yep, yep. So it's like a little uh, little like uh, long soup can, and those are uh, those are nice. They'll take a little more real estate compared to to, to others. Right. Then the MTI yep. one that you mentioned just a moment ago. It's a <clears throat> 
It's a parabolic type dish with a radome on it. Uh, also, wireless instruments has a, a decent uh, antenna as well. It's a kind of a panel or a box antenna, but again, it's it's oh. for the higher band. It's from four eight to six four. So for those that can operate in that range, okay. then that would be a good antenna for you. It's a little. That's the one. It's it's kind of wide. It, I like the material, the plastic. It's kind of robust. Uh, is that? Am I thinking there? Yeah. It's kind of rounded edges. Yeah, that's that was that's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. right. A little little big, depending on the application, I guess. So. And then we have a, a popular one called ALGCOM. Um, they're from Brazil, but they're uh, in the U.S. market now or starting to get, in, get into the U.S. market now. And they have a lot of different choices for antennas, and they're, yeah. they're super affordable from uh, everybody in what, Brazil and, and Mexico that use those guys. Uh, they have uh, three dishes, 29, 32, and 35 dBi that work from 4.9 to 5.875. Okay. And then they have three dishes that are 30, 33, and 35 dBi that work from 5.5 up to 6.4. So, again, they're very they're perfect for the C5C. You yeah. can use these for the B5C as well, uh, but the B5C only operates between 4.9 and 6.2, whereas the C5C is 4.9 to 6.4. So, so you got you have to shop. You've, you've got a, a, trade, a little slight trade-off for gain uh, versus uh, uh, bandwidth or frequency of operation. Right. So I, I can see the 33, 35 on your, your list here going to 6.4, but only down to about 5.5 a gig. But, uh, hey, that's neat, yeah. Uh, what a, Lambowen, mm -hmm. Lambowen. Uh, we played with those a little bit. We did. We labbed them. Uh, we checked them. Lightweight, mm, it could it could be a little more robust. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um and I think they're very inexpensive, weren't they? They're very cheap. They're they're very 40, common in fifty in, U.S. dollars, maybe forty, fifty-ish. I think so. They're they're very common in yeah. South and Central America. Okay. I know a, yeah. a, there's a lot of U.S. customers who are experimenting or using them as well, and it works for them. Uh, this one works from four eight to six five, so it's the perfect right. range for the C five C. Yep. And oh. then we mm -hmm. have. Uh, a couple of Jiris ones here, which we we talked about earlier. It's the uh, oh yeah, a little guy. Later. JRC twenty four and the JRC twenty four EX, which work from five one to six four and five four to five nine. So the JRC twenty four is definitely a good option for the the C five C to utilize the the five nine to six four band if you're outside the U.S. and can use that frequency. Okay, and I, I like the form uh, form factor on it, the footprint. It's nice, and the, the package with the front radome and stuff. Neat little uh, deal. Easy to mount uh, on that guy as well, at 24 uh, Juris. Right. Uh, what's the EX? I don't remember what that is on the Juris. Um, we have I both, remember. but they look pretty much exactly the same. Oh, okay. So I guess the EX is oh, just a, a cheaper know. option that has less frequency oh, okay. usage. Uh, we've got the RF Element uh, twist port dishes, yep. um, the Ultra Dish, the 24 and the 27 DBI dishes. They work from 5.1 to 5.9, so again, appropriate ranges for U.S. customers. Uh, there's plenty of people outside the U.S. who use these, but you can't utilize 4.9 or 6.4 with these, so you know it really depends on what you need to use or, or what spectrum you want to use right, with your you radio. If you're And you're here in the U.S., this, this guy goes to, say, uh, 5,900 meg. Um, yeah, what's your spectrum look like? I guess for that one, do you need to bump? You know, do you need to go lower or higher, or, or right. can you can you park uh, below five point nine? Yep, yep. Then we have the uh, Ubiquity uh, lightweight rocket dish, five G thirty thirty dBi. It goes from five one to five nine. Also, uh, it's pretty cheap too. It's one hundred and fifty bucks, I think, or around one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. Uh, do you get two? Yeah, two for one hundred thirty. Oh, I forget. No, that's that's not that's incorrect. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. Right. One hundred twenty, one hundred thirty each. Something like that. Maybe. And me. then the cool thing about that is the C five C will slip right in on the back of that, and it's got the built in uh, RPSMA cables on the feed horn that connect directly right. to the C five C. It's ready to go out. Yeah, go out of the box. Probably a, that's uh, on the five uh, five gig market. That's that's a. That's a very popular uh, antenna, I'd, I'd say. We've 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 had a few of those in the uh, network. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a few. Yep. Um, then we've got for the B five C. Several common vendors here. Arc Wireless is a, a very common one, and they have thirty and thirty four dBi uh, dual polarity dishes available. Um, you've got the LCOM, same thing. You have thirty and thirty four dBi dual polarity dishes available. 
Um, These are quite uh, robust as well for, in the uh, in the five gig department. As far as the mounting hardware, they're larger hardware and bracketing, uh, right. a little beefier uh, metal on the uh, the reflector, uh, the antenna. And they're very affordable so, too. So they're, yeah. th so they're pretty common out there. Uh, then AOGCOM also has a 29 and 32 dual polarity dish that works between 5.1 and 5.9 that's perfect for the B5C. And then uh, the last one on my list here is RF Elements uh, Ultra Horn, which you can use for both the C5C and the B5C. So you can use the twist port for the C5C, and then they have a, an adapter and for N-type connectors. Get the end connector go. Okay, yep. So uh, keep in mind that there are tons and tons of antenna vendors and antennas out there. Um, these are just some that we've tested with or we know that our customers use. We don't recommend a, a particular vendor um, or type of antenna, except maybe even most of branded equipment. But we understand people have their own preferences. Yeah, you're, and, well, yeah, right. When you're when you're shopping, uh, what 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 are your needs? What does your spectrum look like? You know, um, and 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 please. Uh, uh, purchase, you know, the, the maybe something in the high end, the most affordable, so that way, you know, it's going to last, and, and again, it's in your range and stuff. And then for the ones that are using uh, RF uh, cables or end connectors, etc., make sure you get real, uh, real brand names. Uh, you know, if you're looking at your LMR, your uh, your 400s, uh, 600s, and, and such, or you know, you get your 195 and 240 LMR sizes uh, make sure they're real and they're, they're good quality as well you can look at some of the uh, data sheets on these things <clears throat> and you'll know on price too when you're shopping for a, a pair of jumpers or, or a package of uh, uh, jumpers and look at the velocity factor and how the, the shielding is and, and some other odds and ends right. for, for quality or lack of quality when you're when you're doing your shopping and of course you can always come to the support chat and you can post a link to the product you're, you're looking at and we can definitely look at it for you and tell you if it's, you know, something that's legit or at least help you identify if it's something that you should or shouldn't use. And we'd be more than happy to do that because we want to help prevent issues for you because if you start, if you buy the wrong product, you come to chat, then we'll have to try and figure out where the issue is. And we want to try and prevent you from having issues in the first place. So if you have a question about something, it's best to just come ask us and we'll help you. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. All right. See you later, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe or follow button to stay up to date with our latest podcast, which will be available on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud.